you Jesus. Amen. Amen. Na uweke mikono yako juu tuanze kumwabudu Bwana asubuhi ya leo. Amen. Just lift up your hands. Just worship for this man. Just tell him that he's Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the first and he is the last. God, we just want to worship you this morning, oh God. We just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the great things that, Lord, you have done in our lives, oh God. Thank you, Father Almighty.
and your maker. You are the end. You are the first and you are the last, oh God. You are the first, oh my Father. There is no one like you, Jehovah. The creator of the universe. The creator of the heaven and the earth. Everything belongs to you, Lord. The power belongs to you, Jehovah Master. We thank you, Lord, for what you have done unto our lives. And up to the things that, Lord, you are about to do, oh my Father. We just want to thank you for the gift of life. We thank you, Lord, for salvation, Lord. We thank you for our families, oh God. We thank you, Father, even for the rain, oh God Almighty. We thank you for our nation, oh God Almighty. Because, Lord, you cares for us, my Father. You say in your word, says, my Father, we, do not, we should not worry about our tomorrow because our tomorrow is in our able hand, my Father. Therefore, Lord, you are our provider, my Lord. Yes. And we just want to say thank you because you are wonderful. Yes. And we say thank you, Lord. Thank you so much, oh my Father. Father, we pray that Holy Spirit, may you reign, reign in our services today, Lord. We pray that, Lord, that you may guide us, you may show us your ways, oh God. We pray for your presence, God, to, to go with us, my Father. We say thank you, Lord for, Lord, for everything. Thank you, Jesus, for it is in Jesus' mighty name we do pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, praise and worship team. Bwana Shesana. Amen. Bwana Shesana. Amen. Santene kwa kutuimbia vizuri. You people look good. Hata nasikia tempted, lakini anyway. Asantene sana. Let's appreciate them again. Amen. While we are still upstanding, uh, while we are still upstanding, I would like to invite our speaker for today. Uh, we are really privileged to have one of our pastors. He's no stranger to us. And he's the man of the hour, the man that the Lord has given a message for us this morning. I would like us to give the Lord Jesus Christ a mighty hand clap as we welcome the servant of God, <laughs> Pastor Solomon Lugwili and his wife. Let them give them a good appreciation. Amen. Karibu sana. God bless you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Wana sifiwe tuneza ka. Yeah, this morning I'm born again. I love the Lord so much. As you have heard, my name is Solomon Lugwili. I'm one of the pastors here. And I'm glad this morning to have part of my family. My wife is here and our children are here. Let me give her a chance to greet us and then we continue. Praise the Lord, church. Bwana Yesu wasifiwe. Ya, kwa wageni, mina ito John. Chipke Moe Lugwili. Nimeokoka, Kristo ni Bwana. And I'm happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Without taking much time. Na, naomba tuombe mtumishu wa mungu. Let's pray. Mighty and everlasting Father, we thank you this morning. We give you glory. We want to thank you, Lord, even for what you've done for us, Jehovah King of Glory. This morning, my Father, we just want to thank you even for the rains, Jehovah King of Glory. Father, how we lift you because you are faithful, Jehovah God. Father, Lord God, this morning, even as we sit, Jehovah King of Glory, to receive from you, my Father, how we pray that you may speak to us, Jehovah King of Glory. Speak to our hearts, speak to our minds, Jehovah King of Glory. And Father, Lord God, let us work by your word, Jehovah God. Father, I commit your servant unto your able hands, Jehovah King of Glory, that God may you speak through him, O God. May you anoint him afresh, Jehovah King of Glory, and let your word flow as you want it to be, Jehovah King of Glory. We worship you and we exalt you, O God. Open our hearts, Jehovah King of Glory, that we may receive from you. And open our eyes that we may see you through your word, O God. We give you praise and we exalt your name, O God. 
For we pray all trusting and believing in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much, my wife. This morning, I thank God, as I said, for this opportunity. And thank you so much, our senior pastor, for leading us in this congregation. Some few weeks ago, I ministered a message and I was building on the theme of Deliverance Church. Redigging and repossessing the wells of our fathers. You remember that message? Redigging and repossessing the wells of our fathers. And we were looking the book of Genesis chapter 26. And the theme is mostly from verse 18. But if you want to get that entire message clearly, you read from chapter 25. And we were looking at how Isaac repossessed the wells which were dug by his father Abraham. And as I minister last time, I told you there is a need as a church to go back and redig some of the wells which are very vital to us as Christians. And we read in the book of Acts. I want us we go there. Book of Acts, chapter 2. Just building up on message from verse 42. NIV says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. And all the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods they gave to everyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who are being saved. There are things which the early church did which made them to be strong, which made them to move from one glory to another. One of the things they were doing was fellowship. The other thing is what we call the apostles' doctrine, which is the word of God. The third thing, they were witnessing what the Lord has done in their lives. And they devoted themselves to prayer. And lastly, they were also giving. They were givers. Those five pillars made the early church strong. Made the early church to be recognized. It was there. Praise the Lord. And I said, as believers, we need to go back and redig those wells. And some few weeks ago, I tackled on fellowship. Those who are here, you can remember us doing commitment to fellowship. Three weeks or so, I thank God for our senior pastor. He did, I was not in, but I was able to watch from where I was. He did a very excellent work on giving. Praise the Lord. Giving sacrificially like the early church. Today, 
are more of, I want more of to teach and not to preach. So if you are ready, I don't know how the Lord will minister to you. Be ready, open your heart. Don't look at Solomon, I'm just a vessel. Let the Lord minister to you. Today, we want to look at title have message I've entitled Commitment to the Word of God. Commitment to the Word of God. Last time we talked about fellowship. Today, I want to look at the Word of God. And as we start, I just want you to note, as you live, you cannot go, and it has been proven, you cannot go for eight days if you don't eat, if you don't drink something like water, you don't, you just sit there. There is a time will come, you will die. If you don't eat, you don't drink, you are just there. You won't go for two weeks. Because the body will use all that it has stored in forms of fat. You'll start to be thin. You'll get emaciated. And eventually, you will die. This physical body. If you don't eat, if you don't drink, Things like water or juice, you will die after some time. And let me tell you, brethren, even spiritually, if you don't feed your spiritual being, your soul, you will die spiritually. Praise the Lord. And that is why we have the word of God to nourish our spiritual being, to nourish our souls. That is why you need to interact with the word of God on a daily basis for you to nourish your inner man. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor you need to feed your inner man. If you don't eat food, this body will get emaciated and you will die. If you don't feed you are a spiritual man. You are soul. You will die. And as a church, we are privileged. Because you see the early church, they were able to do things. They were reading scriptures, but they were not privileged the way we are. As we have the full word of God, we can read from Genesis to, Revel to Revelation. Them, they just had part of the Bible. They didn't have even the New Testament. The New Testament was written much later. But you see, when Peter and Paul were preaching, they had just part of the Old Testament. That's why they were able to quote books like Isaiah, because those ones they had. But the New Testament, they didn't have. So some of we are privileged to have the full Bible the word of God. Praise the Lord. We are privileged. And Peter said this is the advantage of carrying a notebook and a pen in the service. If you have, you will be noting some of the scripture I will say they will benefit you. Let's go to the book of First Peter. Chapter 2. I wanted verse 2, but let's, let me read from verse 1. This is Peter writing to the church and to us. He said, therefore, rid yourself of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies, 
crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. Look at Peter. He is telling us like a newborn baby desire, crave for the pure milk of the word of God. Praise the Lord. I don't know if you have ever seen a, 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 a baby that has been born. And this baby is hungry. He tries to look for where the teeth of the mother is. And when this baby finds it, he sucks the milk. Praise the Lord. That is what Peter is telling us. When you get again, desire the pure milk of the word of God. And we should desire the pure milk of the word of God. Uh, scientifically, it has been proven there is that milk, that milk when a mother gives birth or an animal. There is that yellowish milk. How, what is it called? Munaijua. Eh? Mchungaja anasema kwa kikamba. Ina kwa kikamba inaitwa aje? Kithana. In Kiluya in Maragoli they say ikihare something like that. Is it colostrum or something? Eh? Yes, something like that. That yellow milk. That yellow milk, it has been proven that is why when a child is born, you are told to breastfeed for six good months without even giving a child anything. Why? That milk is complete. It is full of nutrients. Our God is great. Praise the Lord. He did balanced diet in that milk. And as a believer, when you read the word of God, we normally encourage, start from the book of John, one of the simplest as you start. That is the cross from the word of God. It will build you. It will cause you to have immunity. Praise the Lord. They normally say, when a child misses to breastfeed for those six months, even later, that child might be affected. Immunity might be compromised. But when a child feeds on that pure milk for six good months, the immunity of that child is built. Praise the Lord. Sisi wengine wetu tulinyonya mpaka tunayenda nasari tunarudi, tunauliza mama kaa hapa. Tunanyonya tena. Praise the Lord. Because we were last bonds, there was nobody... So mkituona mwili iko hivi tulinyonya mpaka tuka make sure tume exhaust. Praise the Lord. Like a newborn baby, desire, take time to read the word of God. It will build you. Praise the Lord. And the word of God did not just, did not just stop there. Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. And verse 12. Hebrews chapter 5. And from verse 12. Yes. The writer of Hebrew, <laughs> writing to those people and to us, he said, In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you elementary truth of God word all over again. You need milk and, so, and not solid food. Let's continue. Anyone who lives on milk, being, sti being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teachings about righteousness. 14. But solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil.
Praise the Lord. The writer is telling us we should not just depend on milk only. We should reach a time when we move from solid food, from pure milk to solid food. By the way, even if it is a child, you feed this child on milk only. Even when the child is five years, you are just feeding the child on milk only. That child will not grow strong. The child will be alive. But that child will not be strong. Spiritually also, we should not just be feeding on milk of the word alone. We should reach a point where we feed on the bones of the word of God. Hello? Praise the Lord. Na kwambia kuna wa Kristo wengi badu ni watoto wa kiroho. Wana kunywa tu maziwa. Praise the Lord. The only scripture they know is John 3:16. For God so loved Ukiwauliza Tell me the memory verse you know. Jesus Jesus Praise the Lord. No any other scripture. Yet that person has been born again for 20 good years. You are a spiritual baby. Praise the Lord. You are a, spirit, a, a, a spiritual you should grow. Praise the Lord. And when you grow, you start feeding on the word of God. I'm telling you even when doctrines that are not right come your way, you will be able to stand because you have been feeding on the solid word of God. You are not just feeding on the milk of the word of God. Praise the Lord. The milk part of the word of God is that which you can just read and you understand and it is just straightforward. Praise the Lord. The solid or the bones of the word of God is when you read like the book of Revelation. And you find the white horse and the black horse and the rider on it. And you are told, can you explain what this means? And you are able to explain then that you know you have the solid food of the word of God. Praise the Lord. Let's clap unto the Lord. You need to move from one level to another. Hatu kiza mtoto. Nunaona baada miezi sita, badu anaway two kilograms. Ama four kilograms, there is a problem. Praise the Lord. But when you see your child grow, when you see your child move from one level to another, I'm telling you as a parent, you feel so good. Praise the Lord. In our family, we are so much delighted. My wife can attest to this. I was sharing in one of our Wednesday service here. There is a time in our family, we, we have just had our evening devotion. We have prayed, and we want to go and sleep. And then our Kalastubon, Hadassah, tell us, Dad, we want to talk. Let's go to the to the room upstairs. Mama, let's go. And she summons everybody. And we were wondering, you know, as a parent, even I have never done maybe something like that, I was wondering, now what has happened? Our grade two child summoning us. And then we go, and she takes over, and she runs the program. She tells us, Dad, Say something, mom, say something without telling you what you'll say. We ended up even appreciating people, appreciating one another, things maybe we, ha we could not even have thought of. I remember, I think she read a scripture and she ran the program, something we had never thought of. Praise the Lord. Something we didn't even expect could come from a child of second grade, class two. Praise the Lord. It just amazed us. That encouraged me as a parent in that this child is 
not just at the same level. This child is moving from one level to another. When you see your child moving from one level to another, as a parent, you feel so good. Praise the Lord. Even God feels so good when he sees you move from one glory to, to another. When he sees the way you are last year spiritually, it's not the same way you are this year. We need to move from one glory to and as we read the scriptures, I want we go to Second Timothy. Second Timothy. You know, there is. The, I, I normally love this verse because I know John three sixteen. Very familiar scripture. For God so loved the world. You go to also 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, like John 3, 16. It speaks a very powerful message there. Listen to what verse 16 says in King James Version. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness. That the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. This scripture, this word you see here, as much as it was written by various people, it was inspired by God. It is God breathed. It is God who enabled this word to be written. And it has a purpose what it is supposed to do. It is supposed to inspire us. It is profitable for us understanding, for correcting us, for instructing us in righteousness. Praise the Lord. This word of God it is powerful. That is why you will come here, the preacher will stand here and challenge you. And you will see your mistakes. Why? The Lord is correcting you where you have gone astray. The word of God is like a mirror. Praise the Lord. It is a mirror to us. When you look into the word of God, you see yourself where the problem is. Praise the Lord. When you go into a mirror and you look, kama nitai unaona imeenda kando, unairekebisha. That is what the word of God does to us. When you read the word of God, you are able to see yourself in line with the word of God. Praise the Lord. I encourage you to read the word of God. Actually, my challenge today, how are you reading the word of God? And as we have seen, this word of God, it is inspired by God himself. God gave men and women to write this scripture for our benefit. And if you want to get, you can read 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. God inspired his people to write this word that as we read it, it may, we may, it may reflect in our lives and we see ourselves. What are the benefits of the word of God? There are so many. There are so many. I just want to share five benefits of the word of God. Five benefits. I say today I'm doing more of teaching. If you can get what I'm teaching today, your spiritual journey will never be the same again. Five benefits. There are so many. I just want to share five because of time. Number one, it lights up our path. The word of God, it will light up your path. Psalms 119 and verse 105. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light 
unto my path. When you read the word of God, God tells you this is the way. And you find where you walk and you are being led by the word of God, there is light. But when you don't read the word of God, you find yourself in darkness. The word of God is a light unto our path. It guides us. Where you step, when you read the word of God, when it is a lamp unto your feet, it shows that even where you go, the word of God will direct you. Why? Because you are interacting with scriptures. Psalms 119 and verse five, or 105. You can also read verse 130 of that Psalms 119. You can also read Proverbs 6, 23. Proverbs 6, 23, and also Psalm, one, Psalm 19 and verse 8. Psalm 19 and verse 8. Number two, I have said number one, it is a light unto our path. Number two, it judges the thoughts and the attitude of the heart. This word will judge your thoughts. And the, it will bring to, to the knowledge even your attitude. When you read your, the word of God, it will even show the attitude you have towards God and towards man. So this word of God, it judges the thoughts and the attitude of the heart. Let's he read Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. From verse 12. For the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. And it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Praise the Lord. The word of God. It is living and powerful. This word of God, it is living. It is not dead. Praise the Lord. It is living and powerful. It is sharper. See, you come to why you a sword, come here and massage. You make what sharpen huku na huku. It can cut. That is why in a cut ambele na nyuma. That is why, and sometimes many people have come to me. You preach, and somebody comes to you and say, "Why were you talking about about me?" Or who told you about our family to speak about our family? Yet, you did not even come in contact with anybody in that family. Why? God knows your intent. He knows your thoughts. He knows your actions. So when the word comes forth, God is able to minister to you. Praise the Lord. And it penetrates even to the heart. That is why it is only the word that can penetrate into your heart in a same even into the bone marrow. In other words, it goes deep even into your thoughts. Praise the Lord. Hello? That is why even when you are thinking things that are evil, when you read the word of God, God just points something to you and you just recognize you are going the wrong direction. Praise the Lord. For example, when you are reading the part of David, when David looked at Bathsheba, bathing, you see, that thing came to the thoughts. When you read that part, God can speak to you and tell you, look at your thoughts. Where are you? What are you thinking of? And then you are able to make a bow turn and you don't go the direction David went. Why? The word of God has pointed a different direction because we learn from example that God has given us in the Bible. Praise the Lord. If you find yourself repeating the mistake that David did, then you are not interacting with the word of God. 
the examples that have been put here, they are there that we may not copy them and do them, the wrong ones. And the ones which are good, we may emulate them. Number three, this word of God is a saving power unto salvation. It has a saving power. Put for us Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. This word of God, when we read it, we believe it, and we are saved. We have eternal life. Listen to what it says. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jews first and also for the Greek. It is the power of God to salvation. This word of God is the power of God for salvation. When we read it, we are get born again. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And when you hear the word of God, you give your life to the Lord, you get born again, you are saved, and you have hope for eternal life. The word of God. Praise the Lord. Number four, this word of God, it is attacking weapon. It is attacking weapon unto the enemy. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 17. It is the attacking weapon. Put on the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the belt of truth, the shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness. Let your feet be fitted with the gospel of peace and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. I'm telling you, the word of God is the weapon for attack. You know, in those days, we didn't have these machine guns and the rifles. They used to have the sword. When you look at a soldier, the weapon he had was the sword or the spear. He was able now to attack the enemy with a sword. Right now we have the AK-47, the machine gun. As a believer, this is your machine gun. Praise the Lord. When the enemy comes, when you read the word of God, you are able to direct the missile unto that which the enemy is trying to bring you away. The word of God. This is the attacking weapon. Praise the Lord. Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And last, the word of God gives us hope. It gives us hope. Without hope, you cannot go even a second day. The word of God will give you hope. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. The word of God gives us hope. When you read the word of God, even when you are discouraged, it comes and encourages you. It gives us you, it gives you hope to face the next step. The word of God will give you hope. Romans, it says in Romans chapter 15 and verse 4, For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. This word of God gives us hope. Even when you are discouraged, when you lose your loved one, your loved one dies. The Bible teaches and tells you, don't mourn like somebody who is ignorant. This person, since he's a believer, you will meet this person at one time. That is the hope the scripture is giving you. Praise the Lord. The scripture gives us hope. When you don't have what to eat, the Bible teaches you, I'm Jehovah Jireh. I will provide for you. The word gives you hope. Praise the Lord. The word of God in the Bible is likened to various things. I want just to share also five things which the word of God is likened to in the Bible. Number one, 
the word of God is referred to or likened to a devouring flame. It's like, this word of God is a devouring flame. It devours sins. It devours things that are not right. Number two, it is a devouring flame. Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 14. It has, it's a devouring flame. Jeremiah 5 verse 14. Number two, it's a crashing hammer. It is referred to as a crashing hammer. Unaona ile nyumbu ndo mafundi wa anatumia wanatumia wanagonga mawe mpaki na kura crash. Unaona kimlima cha mawe kubwa wanagonga kidogo kidogo until it becomes ballast. The word of God is a crashing hammer. Jeremiah 23 and verse 29. Number 3 the one I have said in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 17, it is a weapon for attack. A weapon for attack. Number four, it is a probing instrument. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. It is a probing instrument. Eh? Ni kama kitu niki instrument. Yenye nikiweka hapa ni kuono metokea pale kwa mlango na nikumulike. Ineza kunionyesha jana ulikuwa wapi? Kama ulienda katika uzinzi, ulilala na nani? Na alikuwa mevangu gani? Alikuwa me, mulikuwa wapi? Ukiingia pale ni nakuita ni nakuambia fulani, ulikuwa na mutiso? Na mutiso mulikuwa kule mahali fulani? Praise the Lord. Alafu na shanga, huyu mutu anajuaje. When you read the word of God, that is what it does to you. It is a probing instrument. It can reveal who you are. And number five, the last one. It is a seed. The seed. It is referred to as a seed. That is why Jesus in Mark, Mark chapter 4, Jesus talked of a sower who went to plant seeds. Some went, fell into thorns. Some fell on the dry ground. Some fell on the wayside, and some fell in good soil, and they were able to produce 30, 60, and 100 fold. The word of God is a seed. When it comes into you, how you take it, it will either, you will either be like the one that fell on the ground, dry ground, on the road, in the thorns, and if it finds your heart has some soil also, it will depend if it will produce 30, 60, or 100 fold. The word of God. When you take it, that is why when we are here like this, the same word that I'm preaching, to some, it will produce 30. To some, it will produce 60. And to some, it will produce 100 fold. That is why you will find some, the same message Somebody receives a miracle and another one goes empty-handed. It is how you take the word of God, you apply your faith, and you reap either 30, 100, 60. Praise the Lord. This word of God, if there is a person in the Bible whom I like and what he did is Ezra. You can put for us Ezra chapter 7. You know, when I was a new believer, I had just given my life to the Lord at the university, and we were doing Bible study. We were doing Bible study. There is a verse that I read when I was just a new believer. And it really encouraged me. I have thought of that word all these years. Ezra, chapter 7. Let's go to verse 10. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it. 
and to teach statutes and ordinances in Israel. That's enough, verse 10. Give us New King James Version, uh, the new, uh, NIV. Let's also listen to what it says. NIV says, For Ezra had devoted himself to the study and observance of the law of the Lord and to teaching its decrees and laws in Israel. In summary, those of us who, are in, who have been in colleges, in uh, universities, we normally, we used to have Bible study. I don't know if we still have nowadays. There is a, to, to guide books, we used to, to use them when doing Bible study. And behind it, there was that Ezra chapter 7 and verse 10. And Ezra devoted himself, number one, to studying the word of God. Studying the word of God. Number two, practicing the word of God. Practicing the word of God. And number three, teaching the word of God. If you happen to have those two guidebooks which we used to have for Bible study, go look behind it. You will find that Ezra was studying, practicing, and teaching the word of God. And that is what I want we do in these few minutes. Number one, studying the word of God. How do you study the word of God? Praise the Lord. How do you study the word of God? Unajua kitambo, sometimes mimi nilikuwa nga na habit. Nilikuwa na chukua Bible hivi, alafu na iweka hivi. Alafu na wacha, ianguke. Mahali ya mefunguka, hapo ndiyo nitafanya nini? Nitatafuta some verses, alafu ni, ni some. Praise the Lord. Tena the following day nitaweka, niangushe, ianguke, na ifunguke. Praise the Lord. At one time, ilifunguka mahali inasema, and the Judah hung himself. And the Judah, and my eyes, nilifunga hiyo bibilia na nikawacha, because I feared hanging. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you a practical thing. How do you read the word of God? How do you read the word of God? There is a way you can read, you take scriptures and read. And I'm telling you, we are living in a privileged generation. We have even phones. Even when you don't want to read, there, is sad, there are some Bibles you download and you can just close your eyes and it just read as you listen. Do you have such Bibles in your phone? Even when you don't want to read, you can listen. That is still reading the word of God. Meditate on the word of God. Read it, listen, and meditate on the word of God. Memorize some of the scriptures that you are going to read that you have read. Memorize some of the scripture. Don't just know John eleven thirty five. 35. Jesus waits. No any other scripture. Some of the scripture you will memorize when the devil attack, you will be able to use those scriptures to retaliate the enemy. When Jesus was attacked by the devil, Jesus was able to use the word, it is written, it is written, when you have the word of God in you, you are able to counter the enemy. Unaambia shetani, it is written. If you don't have it in you, you don't even have the Bible, what will you quote? Let it be in your heart. Praise the Lord. You know, I'm, I, I will not say I'm very perfect in reading scripture. I'm also learning. Praise the Lord. 
I'm also learning. I just want to challenge. Um, the, if you will forget my message today, just remember this. I'm challenging you. How do you read your Bible? I'm telling you with the busy schedules we have, you might find yourself a day has ended without you reading what? Scriptures. You might find some of us who work, for example, in town. You have to leave the house by five. Kwa hivu unaamuka na kuoga maramoja na kuvua na kuanza kungangana, utapata gari aje wende. If you are not careful, my brother, my sister, a day might end without you reading what? Scriptures. It has happened to me as a pastor. Some days I have gone, I have not read the scripture until the Holy Spirit challenges me. Have you read the scripture? And the days I don't interact with scripture, even when my relation with Mama Caleb changes, napata enga imeanza kupanda, things have just started to happen. Why? The flesh is taking over and the spirit of God is decreasing in me. When you interact with the word of God, you are kept in place. How are you interacting with the word of God? That is my question today. How are you reading the word of God? Many years, and I thank God. You know, God does things with a purpose. I used to stay with my brother here in veterinary. And I used to see him buy to small books every day with Jesus. And the, he used to see him read. Sometimes when he leaves, I could read some of them. And I discovered something. It is good to have a guide that enables you to study the word of God. I'm just sharing with you what I do and it is beneficial to me. Praise the Lord. Hello? Nobody has told me to come and market anything, but there is something I discovered which is helping me. Praise the Lord. For example, I went to the bookshop and I got this book. It's very simple. It's called The Daily Guide from Scripture Union. One thing I like about using a guide, I don't know how you, you do. I'm talking about Solomon. This is a guide for 2023. It starts from January 1st all the way to December 31st. And it will give you scriptures. It will give you a lesson and other reference to other Bible passages. So when you get it for that day, you are able to read scriptures and interact with the word of God and learn lessons. And on a daily basis, I go get that scripture, read it, Analyze it and use it later. Praise the Lord. And I'm telling you, I remember there is a year I did not bite. And that year, I did not interact with the scripture well. How are you reading the word of God? Let me also challenge you. When did you read the Bible in one year from Genesis to Revelation. When did you read it? When did you read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation? When did you read it? When did you read it? I can tell you there are people here they have never read the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. There are some they read it five years ago. Some even seven, some even 15 years ago, depending on when they get born again. Praise the Lord. When did you read the word of God? From Genesis to Revelation. You know, some of these things you have to purpose. They will not come from heaven. You have to purpose. You have to purpose. That is why I say 
personally, I have made a decision. When I wake up, sometimes I wake up when the rest have not woken up, or when our kids are waking up to go to school, I go to this, and I do a study. Very early in the morning, I do a study. And when I come to the office, I have another one, which is called our daily bread. It is also another study. This is in imported. This is local. One thing I love with this small one, it is edition 2023. One thing I love about it is that I can get a devotion. But more so, what I love about this, it has a guide of reading the Bible for entire year. The entire Bible in one year. So, in the morning, once I have done this, during the day, I will do a devotion of this and read the scriptures that I have been given to read. So you will find, for example, I can read Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3, and then go read Luke chapter 4 and 5 for that day. The following day, I will be given other scripture. And the good thing, the way they have arranged, you can be able to follow from one level to another, and by the time I will be finishing this year, I will have read the entire Bible. When did you read the entire Bible in your life? When did you read it last? That is my challenge for you. Praise the Lord. And as you read scripture, get a passage that you may learn what it, what it says. You know, there are some people who have used this acronym of the word SPEC. S-P-E-C-K. Speck. Speck is like a small thing. Remember when Jesus said, remove first of all the speck from your eye before you can see. Remove first of all the log in your eye before you can see this. It's someone is word. There is this word called speck, the acronym. S, you can look at the screen, is, is sin to confess. When you read a passage, for example, Mark chapter 10, verse 46, 42 to 46 or whatever. You read and you ask yourself, is there sin for me to confess? When you read, if there is any sin and the Lord is showing you there is sin you are doing, confess it. For example, if you are not reading scriptures, you are sinning. From here, go and confess and tell God, God, I'm not interacting with the scriptures the way I'm supposed to. I confess. God, help me. Praise the Lord. Number two, P. Is there a prayer for you to make? Is there a prayer for you to make when you read that scripture? Number three, is there an example for you to follow or to avoid? Number four, for C, is there a command for you to obey? Is there a command for you to obey? And number five, K, is there something you are learning that it will increase your knowledge about God? Is there something you are learning about God that will increase your knowledge about God? Kind of Allow me to share in these few minutes some few things which will help you as you study your word. Some of the things you will need if you want to study the word of God. I'm teaching you how you can study the word. You know, when we went to Mezoya, when we just come to the service, we, we are preached to, we go home. That's like you have gone to a hotel food has been served and you are eating. But what I'm teaching today, you go to the lake, you fish, you come cook and you eat. Nobody has cooked for you. You are cooking for yourself. Praise the Lord. Some of the things that you will need when you want to study the word of God. Number one, there are things. Number one, 
when you want to study the word of God, you will need a regular time. Number one, you need a regular time. If it is in the morning, create that time and observe that regular time. If it is five in the morning, set an alarm. If it is at ten in the morning, set time. Because you might find you are not doing it five, but maybe you are a house self. When people have gone to work and you have finished your work, then that is your regular time. Have a regular time. Number two, a quiet place. A quiet place. Praise the Lord. Look for a quiet place. Yes, I understand, for example, you want to go to work and then you go in a matatu. Gutu, gutu, gutu. You look like a potato. A potato. The music is singing. You look like a potato. Very loud. And you want to do your personal quiet. It might somehow not be possible. Praise the Lord. The images that are on the screen, they are not godly. Yet you are studying the word of God. It might not be possible. Look for a quiet place. Number three, you will need a Bible. I'm saying some of the things you will need a regular time, a quiet place, a Bible, and number four, a notebook for writing the lessons you are going to learn. Number five, you will need a pen or a pencil to note. And number six, depending on yourself, this is not a rule. Look for a guide that will help you to learn the word of God. There are sometimes I have interacted with these devotions and they are normally different. There are times when they will just do a topic. Maybe they are just doing anger. So for like three days, you are just learning about anger, 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 anger. Another time you just learn humility, humility. Right now in this one, it is now doing passage after passage. For example, right now we are doing the book of Mark. And then we have just, we, we, last week I was just doing the book of Joel. So it moves from one book to another. Have a guide. And one thing you don't even need to go and buy. Some things you can download them. You can download a guide that can help you. You don't even have to go and buy. Even it is digital. I have said, look for a regular time. Look for a quiet place. Have a Bible. Have a notebook. Have a pen or a pencil. And a guide material to help you into a regular, systematic, and interactive reading of the Word of God. Now, you have decided you want to have a devotion. What do you do? Number one, pray. Start with prayer. Confess any sin and ask for the Holy Spirit to help you understand and respond to what you are about to read. So you have looked for your quiet time, you have seated and you want to start. Before you even open the scriptures, pray. If there is a sin, first of all, confess that sin. Let your heart be clean and ask the Holy Spirit to come and reveal to you that which he wants you to know in the scripture you want to interact with. And then number two, Open the Bible and read the scripture. Read the portion maybe you want to read. Read. Read that passage carefully. Read it. Read it again. Now read it pole pole as you internalize. And after reading number three, meditate on that word. Don't just read and go. And as you meditate, observe the key words that have been used there. For example, if it is Passover, not the word Passover. Why is it written in this part of scripture I'm learning? Not the key words. Not the places 
that have been written in that passage you are reading. For example, if it is Galilee, when Jesus is moving from Galilee, when he will go to Jericho, you will know yesterday he was in Galilee, today he is in Jericho, tomorrow he will be in Jerusalem. Not the places that the scripture is talking about. Also not the people, not the events. And prayerfully seek for the lesson or the truth that are in the passage. When you read that scripture, the thing the Lord wants to teach you. Ask God, what truth do you want me to know about this scripture I have read? And the Lord, through the Holy Spirit, will tell you the truth. Maybe he will tell you, I want you to know God who provides. I want you to know it is the Lord who heals. When you know that truth, and maybe you are sick, you will say, God, you have said you are Jehovah Rapha. Heal me. And the Lord will confirm his word. Praise the Lord. Know the truth that the Lord is teaching you. And as you meditate on that word, I'm just... That was number three. You pray, you read, you meditate. There is a fourth one. But before we go to the fourth one, I'm just doing this because it is being recorded. You can go back and you can still get this thing that can help you. When you meditate on the word of God, ask yourself these questions. I'm, going, I'm just about to wind up. Ask about these eight questions. When you are meditating now, you have read, you have prayed, you have read the scripture, and now you are meditating. You have noted the persons, the events, the people. Now you are meditating just on that word. Ask yourself, what does the Bible teach about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? Question number one. When you read that scripture, ask yourself, is there something God is talking about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit in this passage I have said? If there is nothing about that, you move to the next question. Is there any example for me to follow or something to avoid? Is there any example for me to follow or not to follow? That is a question number two you can ask yourself. That part of scripture you have read, is there an example God is telling you, don't copy this example? Or is there an example God is telling you, like the Bereans, search the scriptures like the Bereans, and then that one you get it. I have to search scriptures like the Bereans. Number three, is there any command for me to obey? Is there any command the Lord is telling me that I need to obey? Question number three. Question number four. Is there any promise for me to believe? Is there any promise? If there is any promise in that scripture you are reading, then claim it. Number five. Is there any warning for me to heed? Is there any warning? Maybe the scripture you are reading, there is something God is warning you. Then heed that warning. And number six, is there any prayer for me to pray or to remember? Is there a prayer in the scriptures that I have read? And what is this prayer saying to me? Can I do the same prayer? Is there a prayer in the scripture you have read. And number seven, what truth is God revealing to me in this passage? I'm repeating this. What truth? Because God will not just give you a scripture for, will not just give you a scripture for nothing. There is something God wants you, that you may learn from him. There is a truth he wants you to learn. And number eight and the last one, is there any other Bible passage that can help me 
understand this passage better. Is there any other passage? I have said, for example, when I read this book, there are some other passages I will be encouraged to read. For example, when I'm doing the book of Mark, the other day I was reading about Bartimaeus, chapter 10. And the scripture even referred to me in the book of Matthew and in the book of Luke. So I was able to read the one in Matthew. I was able to read the one in Luke. And in Matthew, you will find it is talking about two beggars. In Mark, you will find it is talking about one beggar. In Luke, you will find it is talking about one beggar. And when I was reading it, the Lord was telling me, in Matthew, don't confuse. It is the same event. Maybe there were two beggars. Matthew was looking at them, there were two. But maybe it is the vocal one who said, but Mars, heal me. The other one did not. The scripture is not contradicting itself. It is the same event. Praise the Lord. You are able to refer. If so, you know you can read the one in Matthew, in Luke, or in Mark. And maybe a, a Muslim comes and challenges you. Oh, you are talking about Mbatimayas. Yet here it is talking about two beggars. Here it is talking about one beggar. One bl sorry, one blind person. You have to interact with the scriptures and know how to answer someone. Praise the Lord. So, as you do the study, I'm telling you, have a reference Bible. And I borrow the words our senior pastor normally say, invest in a good Bible. Invest in a good Bible. You can afford to buy a phone of 12,000, of 6,000, of 40,000. You can invest also in a good Bible. Like the NIV study Bible. If you talk to senior pastor, he can advise you what kind of a good Bible. A Bible that can give you reference. There are some Bibles that have references. When you read a passage, it can refer you to other scriptures. And I normally say, before you read commentaries of other people, interact with the word of God. Let the Lord minister to you before you even read other commentaries of other people. They are good. Read them. But first of all, let the Holy Spirit reveal to you that which he wants you to do. So those are eight questions. What does the Bible teach about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit? Is there any example for you to follow or not follow? Is there any command for me to obey? Is there any promise for me to believe? Is there any warning for me to heed? Is there any prayer for me to remember or to make? What truth is God revealing to me in this passage? And lastly, is there any other Bible passage that can help me understand this passage better? I go back. I was there talking about four things when you are doing devotion. You pray. You read the word of God, you meditate, and number four, you respond. How do you respond? You respond to the passage in prayer. Pray for the things that you have learned. The ones God wants you to in a positive way, obey and do them. The ones he has told you not to do, don't do them. And then, get your pen and notebook. And then note some of the things the Holy Spirit has been teaching you. Don't just trust a memory. Put some of those things in a notebook. They will help you later. And lastly, share. Decide to share that which the Lord has been ministering to you. Share with other people. And when you share, you, you benefit a lot. It sticks in you. We go back to Ezra. Ezra studied the word of God. We have been learning about studying the word of God. Number two, 
he applied the word of God. He practiced the word of God. It is one thing to read the word of God. It is another thing to practice it. Tell your neighbor to put in practice. To put in practice. I normally say this. Even if you have a very good antibacteria, soap, deto, <laughs> zuri, a very good antibacterial soap, if you don't use that shop, soap to clean yourself, you will remain dirty. Utanukia <laughs> watu. Why? You are not using that soap. If you don't apply the word of God, it is as good as useless. Hatu kaenda ununue a very expensive soap na uiweke kwa shelf na uendelee kutembea tu, utaendelea kunuka, nguo zako zitaendelea kunuka hata kama eri umeambiwa iko na chembe chembe za kutoa madoa doa zote. If you don't use it, your clothes will remain dirty. It is until you use it is when you'll be clean. It is until you apply the word of God is when it will benefit you. Praise the Lord. And the word of God, like a soap, it will clean your inside so that the words that come out of you, they are clean. Praise the Lord. They are clean. Why? You have interacted with the word of God. And even the outside, it will be clean. Ha <laughs> ha, praise the Lord. Look at how you look smart. Why? Because you are believers. The word of God has worked on you. Wengine wetu mkama hamunge kuwa meokoka, hata sahi munge kuwa kwa mutaro sahi. Unazama nimbe, ni asubui ama ni sangapi. Uko mchafu. But because you have believed in the word of God, that is why you are smart the way you are. The word of God even makes you to look presentable from the outside. Praise the Lord. And then, after you have read, you have studied, you are observing it, do what Ezra did. Teach others. Teach others. Preach it. God will provide opportunities for you to minister that word. Teach it. Minister it. And there are so many opportunities for you to share your word. The word God has ministered to you. Praise the Lord. There are so many opportunities. You know, as I said the other time, I had just had my devotion. And then I came for lunch hour. The person who was to minister in lunch hour had an emergency and did not come. You know, that which the Lord had taught me in the morning, I was able to come and minister. And the ones who were in, uh, in lunch hour, some last week, you remember I was sharing about what do you want me to do for you? When the Lord asked but Myers, what do you want me to do for you? Those who were in lunch hour, you remember that title of the message. I had just had my quiet time and I was able to share it. And I'm telling you, that message has stuck where? Little did I know, just a few days, senior pastor will call me and tell me, Solomon, I was to go preach somewhere, go preach. And I went there. And the Lord told me, that message I minister to you, preach it. And I was able to preach. And I was blessed. And I believe the people I shared, they were blessed. Why? When you interact with the word of God, God will provide opportunities for you to, to share it. And there are so many opportunities. Wamama, praise the Lord. Wamama, praise the Lord. Sema kwanzia kesho. Sema kwanzia kesho. It is our week. Yes, these are opportunities. Usiambiwe na kiongozi wa wamama wewe ndi unahubiri on Tuesday lunch hour. Migu inaanza kukua na? Na fellowship. Ah, ah. Interact with the word. 
and you will just come here. That which the Lord has been teaching you, you will come to teach others. And I can tell you, when you do that, that message sticks. And you will continue to remember it. Why? The Lord is using you. Praise the Lord. And be ready in season and out of season. Be ready in season and out of season. Here last Wednesday, those who came for midweek service, we were here, and the pastor was to come and minister. When he is just about, again, you are not here, wap. Alafa napigia, one of us. And the leni kuimba, I'm coming. So to naimba, hopi mchungaji anafanya nini? Tukisikia geti inaguzwa, tunasema yeye ndio hui anafanya nini? Anakuja. Tunangoja. And then, time ya kualika muhubiri inafika. Na kiongozi anasema, now we want to welcome the servant of. Ninajaribu kuangalia huko, maybe ameona mchungaji amefika. Hakuna, praise the Lord. And here I am. I have to minister. Be ready in season and those who are here on Wednesday, you remember how it was. Be ready in season and out of season. My question is, how are you interacting with the word of God? Do you have your quiet time? Do you have your personal time? When did you read the entire Bible? The whole of it. Can you name all the Bible books, the 20 and the 30, can you name all of them, the 66, without confusing? How are you interacting with the word of God? God bless you. Pastor, you can finish for us. Praise the Lord, brethren. I said praise the Lord. Amen. You know, for many of us ministers who come to minister here, when we are aware that we are going to come and share the word, all of us, not sometimes, but all of us, spend time in prayer asking the Lord what we shall come and share. And when the Lord speaks a message such as we've heard today, God knows what we need to hear, what is important for our spiritual nourishment. And I thank God for the variety of messages that come on this pulpit. Some to excite you, some to challenge you, some to plead for money, some to teach you. And this morning, I feel that we are being challenged, that we probably have neglected the word of God. To Meomba, Nivizuri, we have had good keshas, we've had good times of prayer, but probably we need, we need to revisit our interaction with scripture. The Bible says, for man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Mchungaji amezungumza mambo mengi. And I'm sure kuna vitu vingine vimekupita. I'm very sure. Kuna mahali palifika uka float. Lakini kwa hiyo kufloat yote, the best thing to do is this. What is the message to me this morning? to revelation the scriptures. Uh, this is what I would do if I were you because that's exactly what I'm going to do. Is to stand before God and say, 
God, it is very possible that in the process of doing the daily chores of life, kutafuta unga, that I spend more time fellowshipping with friends and at work than deliberately setting aside time. Natafuta desk, natafuta mali pakuka, open the scriptures like you are in an office doing serious business and read the Bible in a thorough, systematic manner. Bwana shesana. Alianza kusema vile unafungua biblia and let it open until you hear that you are hung, you're hanging yourself. <laughs> Nobody wants to hang himself. Praise the Lord. But the challenge is, do you seriously have time that you have set aside day by day? Whether it's 30 minutes, whether it's one hour, to systematically read your Bible. And for many of us who are here, I would recommend that if you would concentrate on the New Testament and read it systematically. Unaanza na Matthew chapter 1 verse 1. Unasikia vile kizazi cha Yesu kiko. Na usiruke ati fulani akazaa fulani a. Hapana usiruke we we hata kama uelewi nani alizaa fulani. Just just read it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The way you're smiling ni kama mnairukaga hapo because all of us boring. Can we all stand up, please? Please, all of us, stand up. All of us. I'm requesting that all of us personally interact with that message. Nakumwambia, God, I have heard what you have said. I've heard your challenge. Help me to set aside day by day time to systematically read the word of God. And after I have read it, I should sit down and ask myself, the passage that I have read in Asema Kitugani, what is it telling to me personally? And that way we shall profit from our scripture reading. Shall we all go before the Lord and ask the Lord to give you and to challenge you that you may spend good premium time with the scriptures that you may read, study, meditate on the scriptures so that they may have a positive effect on your spiritual life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for that challenge this morning on scripture. Thank you, Lord. Study to meditate. Open scripture. To Brethren, I can tell you what is going to happen right now. As we leave this place, we might actually forget what was preached. Who do you think is responsible for making us forget? Taja yeye. Mtaje. Anaitwaje? Taja yeye. Mtaje wacha wacha aibu. Ni nani huyo? The devil does not want you to read and study the word because he knows there is power 
and the word. Miracles follow the word. Prayer that is based on scripture is answered because God is faithful to fulfill his promises. Jesus said, Munakosea manake hamjui maandiko wala nguvu za Mungu. Matthew 22, 29. You are because you do not know scripture or the power of God. Now, in the next one minute, I want her to do some spiritual battle with the devil because he's going to stop you from reading the word. I'm telling you, he's going to stop you from reading the word. He will give you many excuses. Mtoto ataanza kulia, kiatu tapotea, utaanza kusikia kiu, alafu stove itapoa, haina maftata, ndio uende kanunue maftata, ukirudi, masada kusoma. There are a thousand things the devil will do. Now we want to tell the devil, nime kugundua, hauta nizuia kusoma nini? Angalewele muna nyamazia. We want to do spiritual battle and tell the devil you are not going to hinder me from reading the word because I know you want to remove the word from my heart. There is power in the word of God. That's why Jesus said, the words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Amen. Shall you go before the Lord? Just half a minute. Muambie shetani hauta nizuia kusoma neno. I'm going to read the scriptures in Jesus' name. You are not going to stop me from reading scripture. Father, we thank you. Come against the powers of darkness, spirits of darkness that hinder people from reading scripture. Take power and authority against the demonic spirits who come to be an obstacle. We bind them and cut them out in the name of Jesus. We bring them down in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that we shall take power and authority against every demonic spirit that comes against our study time, our meditation time. We put down those dark forces in the name of Jesus. And we pray that the spirit of the Lord will enable us to read, to study, to understand, to memorize the scriptures that we may do script, uh, spiritual warfare with the word of God. Tunakau katau pinzani watu wa muovu shetani. Tunashusha shetani na mapepo wake katika maisha yetu. Nao tuzuia kusoma neno. We bring them down in the name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God. May this challenge remain with us. That we may be faithful to read, to study and meditate on the word of God. And even as we meditate upon it, help us to act on the word. In Jesus name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Pigia Yesu Makofi Jaman. Pigia Yesu Makofi Mazuri. Hallelujah. As you go home, take that challenge with you. That it is important, it is paramount that you spend time personally. Sio mkikiwa team wewe mwenyewe binafsi to sit down read study meditate and act on the word of god let us take our seats briefly uh, i would like to bring the announcements and as i do so i will ask the praise and worship team to come so that they can give us a number as we give our tithes and offerings as i make the announcements the ushers can bring in the baskets so that we save on time these are the announcements for this week Monday prayers, tomorrow we are here tomorrow is Monday we are here at 6 to 7pm for prayers I thank God for those who will be coming tomorrow for the prayers praise the Lord praise the Lord kesho ni jumatatu saa kuminambili hadisa moja tunakuja kuomba do I have an amen please come so that we pray together Wednesday we have our midweek service from 6 to 7 p.m. Our lunch, our meetings are on from Monday to Friday. 1 to 2 p.m. we gather here for our lunch, our meetings. Discipleship classes, every new believer, 
If you've just recently joined us, please join the discipleship class. It runs every Sunday from 10 to 11 in one of the rooms here at the back. Next week from tomorrow, Monday, up to Sunday, we have our ladies week. The women are going to lead us in our lunch hour meetings, in the prayer meetings on Monday and in our midweek service. And on Sunday, they will be ministering to us. They are reading the word. They are meditating the word and they will be acting on the word. Buenas sana, ladies. Yes, ladies, do I have an amen? Yes, our ladies are going to minister to us from, from tomorrow up to Sunday. Home cell fellowships, just to remind you, we have M. Bulbul, those who live here in Bulbul, they come to the church on Tuesdays in the evening for their home cell fellowship. Kerarapon, meet on Tuesdays at Chonjo in various homes. Kangawa, we meet on Tuesdays at Grace Njeri's house. Oleopolos, they meet on Tuesdays at Mulatia's house. Ngong Township, Tuesdays at Amos Mutwiri's house. Kariobangi, they meet on Friday in various homes. Kibiko, Mondays at Mama Shiko's house. If you live in all, one of those areas, please ask the brethren around you and they will inform you exactly where the fellowship is. Today we have a medical camp that is going on. Are they ready, James? Wakotari. We have a medical camp by Calvary Hospital. Calvary Hospital is in Ngong. Uh, just near where the Bounty Hotel is. As we say the words of the grace to Kimaliza, this is a free medical camp. They come and they have nothing. These ones have got testing equipment and they also have come with some drugs. If it's not a very serious ailment, for the small ailments, they have drugs. They have come with drugs. So you'll just go through there and go to the top floor in one of the rooms there, they will direct you where you shall, they, they can do some medical investigation and they will be able to assist you. Kwa hivyo kama unamahali pana maumivu, unamsada, unaitaji, just go up there and they are going to help you. Whatever, whatever ailment it is, just, just go up there, they will help you. Uh, we have a sub-region rally in this church on Sunday 26th in the afternoon. On Sunday, 26th of March, we shall have a sub-region rally here in the afternoon. All the other sub-region churches will join us here in the afternoon and we shall have our rally. So please prepare yourself that on that day, after the second service, instead of going home, we shall be here so that we join together with other churches for our rally. Buona uh, sana. Amen. I thank God for you because the equipment we see, the building we see, the plot we have built on is because of our giving. On the 2nd of July, we are going to have our fundraising. We believe in a mighty God. And we are not, and we refuse to focus on the economic state of the nation. Our God is able to provide for his work. I said our God is able to provide for his work. Amen. And because we are the people that worship here, God is going to use us. God is going to use us to give generously for the building of this church. So, as we pray, and as you pray, ask God to give you finances that you can bring it here for the building of God's sanctuary. And as you plant that seed of faith, I can promise you as a servant of God, your financial state will not be the same. God is going to change it for the better. Amen. This is fertile ground for sowing your financial seed so that God can empower you financially and bless you financially. We tell you early so that you can prepare yourself so that by 2nd of July, we are going to give generously. Who goliatho lazima akuje chini katika jina la Yesu. Do I have an amen? Amen. 
Thank you for your wallets and for your passes. I can see even the money coming out of your wallets and coming here. At the apostles' feet, maybe when I the apostle, I'm Apostle Mweti. You'll change my name now to, to, to Apostle Mweti. Especially on Sundays when you are bringing your offerings up here. Buona sana. But we are going to give to God. I don't believe in trusting in my finances for giving. I trust in God to provide for me the finances I need to give here. So, jiombe, ombe wa shirika wote, that on that day we shall be able to give generously. Nasema tuombe, it's possible for God to give you money, lakini huna moya wakutoa. You know it's possible. Why do I see some guilty faces around? Anyway, Bwana Shesana, we believe that we are going to hit the target this year in Jesus' name. Apigia Yesu Makofi. Apigia Yesu Makofi. We would like to give our tithes and our offerings. So please, as the praise and worship team give us a number, just come and simply give your tithes and offerings to the Lord as we worship the Lord with our giving. Amen.